over at Social Body Lab, we've got Kate Hartman. <laughs> exactly, Sean is right. You endless horse me once. Shame on me. <laughs> um there's just not that much endless horse to go around um but we will pass it over to you folks really excited to see what you are going to share with us yes please go uh, take 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 the wheel <laughs> the body lap. should we talk now do you guys want to not please. talk <laughs> yes hi lady hi sid <laughs> um hi um we're here uh joining from the uh, social body yeah, lab da, da, da. <laughs> um, in Toronto um, at OCAD University. So nice to see everyone. Um, uh, yeah, so OCAD is a small art and design school, if you haven't heard of it. It's located in downtown Toronto. We're all professors in a program called Digital Futures. So my name is Kate Hartman, and I do a lot of work with wearable technology and electronic textiles. Uh, my name's Adam Tyndale. I work with music and make uh, electronic music instruments. And I'm Nick Puckett. I am do interactive spaces, architecture, and general nonsense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so we're um, uh, here in this space, um, also part of a research group called Social Body Lab, um, which has been up and running since 2010, um, surprisingly. <laughs> it's been going for quite a long time. And so we work across a lot of different disciplines, kind of thinking about how um, technology affects the ways in which you know we engage with space and sound and other humans, because people are weird. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, but before we get into some of our projects, um, I just wanted to tell you about this amazing experience that I had where I um, <laughs> I joined this really, really cool group where if you just scan this code, you can be part of the really cool group too. Um, so yeah, there's that for you. Um, and Nick's a member. Adam, can we convince you? Yeah, possibly. Yeah? Yeah. What would it take to convince you to join Open Hardware? uh that's a that's a good question what's what's in it what's in it for me as a prospective member okay so <laughs> i'll just say that i so i've been i took a long hiatus but i have been going to the open harbor summits since the the beginning um and so i feel quite fondly about it um it, but i got to go again this year for the first time well in person i attended virtually the year before but i got this really cool badge um but it was it was so cool because I uh, I live here in Toronto and work with these awesome people, um, and so I got to take the train um, with a bunch of amazing DF grad students, um, and so we got to attend the, the summit. And then there were all these people that I know from my other um, like New York life at ITP <laughs> NYU, and lots of colleagues and former students and former coworkers. And so um, anyway, it was really nice to see those communities mixing. And then there's people from all over the world, <laughs> and they make great stuff. Right. They give it away, and they provide support and other exciting things. That sounds great. but. The problem is you can't take the train from Toronto to Scotland. <laughs> I know. I know. But it's a community that exists year round, Adam. It's not just about the summit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Interesting. So yeah. events like this. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Like, how cool is it that um, Lee and Sid are hanging out for 24 plus hours? The schedule looked longer than 24 hours and, and yeah. just like got One together. Horse per hour. So many <laughs> one horse people. hour. Yeah. 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 One horse hour. <laughs> yeah. That extremely long horse. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Anyway. So we'll we'll circle back about your final decision. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um so we've done a lot of projects over the years here. Um we are not yet at the stage of um officially producing uh registered open hardware projects, but I do feel like that's on our horizon. It's something that we've talked about a lot. Um I'll just briefly talk about a project um, that I just uh, worked on in collaboration with two other of our colleagues, um, uh, Cindy Permba and Emma Westicott, called Bodies in Play. And so this was like kind of like a, a three-year project building off of several other multi-year projects with a group in Toronto called DM DMG or Dames Making Games. And so the 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 recent iteration of it was around um, uh, just thinking critically about how 
uh, we work with our bodies and different bodies and different lived experiences in both uh, wearable technology, virtual reality, and extended reality, and like all mushing it all together um, <laughs> across these academic and you know kind of games and creative tech communities. Um, so it's really fun. We ended up doing it. Um, and so one thing that was really nice, so the one piece of it that I ran was called Bodies and Wearables, because sometimes you put a body in a wearable. <laughs> um, and we got to make, so it was like, it was, it was the first activity we did um, that involved making, but it was still, it was like kind of like sort of in person, sort of not. Right. And so we made these, these cute little kits. And so something that was lovely, I guess, I just want to highlight two things in the kits. Like we were, we were, you know, leading stuff online and in person. Um, we got to work with like really cool tools, like the um, Circuit uh, Playground Express um, and all its little supporting items, um, which is uh, an open source board. Um, and so this was, and then uh, the other thing was that we worked with some of these little um, uh, doodads, which are servo <laughs> motor mounts, um, which you can use uh, to mount to your clothing in different ways. And so I talked about this at the summit in 2022, um, which this is the Kinetic Wearables Toolkit, which came out of Social Body Lab. But so the, for the folks who are local, we were able to provide them with physical kits, but then we also had a lot of people who weren't with us physically. And so it was neat to be able to um, refer them to things that they could buy off the shelf, like um, this, this lovely kit from Adafruit, but then also um, to be able to share the designs, you know, for these circle mounts and have people printing them out, you know, in, you know, the middle of Canada or somewhere in the US or somewhere in South America um, and to be using the same designs. So that kind of, um, uh, refresh my memory of the joy of sharing <laughs> designs and how that can like turn into crazy physical manifestations. Um, yeah, and then also we got There's something to... about slots with that. Oh yeah, that was in bodies in X Bix, which is bodies in extended reality. So uh, yeah, speaking of slots, today's a sloth day. Um, <laughs> myself and Max Lander and Izzy Culpitz Campbell made a, a sloth uh, like. VR game where you sit, you lie on your back, and you have these. Uh, the con the controllers are at the end of these these arm extensions. So so it's actually up here, and so you get to be a sloth, and you're eating leaves. And then there's an and you're in VR, and you can see the leaves. And then there's this accompanying um, uh, like apron that you wear. So you, there's haptic feedback, and you can feel the leaves yeah. going down your sloth belly. So yeah. anyway, when I signed on this morning and saw Andy's sloths, I was just like dying. Um, <laughs> So yeah, and uh, we also recently did this um, this bodies in residence um, uh, residency, which brought a lot of people together, um, and we hosted them here at our social body lab and also gameplay lab, um, and uh, had some like really famous people like Lee Wilkins. Um, really? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway, it's just really interesting to think about how these tools can open up conversations. Um, across different communities. And so one of the things that I really enjoyed about this project is like we were working with this community partner that's focused on um, uh, like much with the mission, the mandate of the uh, OHS, is that the right? OHS uh, fellowship, yeah. um, but, but like kind of getting different marginalized groups more involved in the center of determining like what we're making with tech. So um, that's my little rant about bodies in play, which is this project. And if you go to bodiesinplay.org. Um, that is where you can learn more about it. Um, but I wanted to pass it on to Adam and Nick to, to give a little intro to another project that the three of us got to work on. Do you want to start it? <laughs> <laughs> as long as it's not awkward. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, uh, so, so we, uh, we, we worked on this project called Rossum or R-U-R, A Torrent of Light, which was based off this play, um, uh, Rossum's Universal Robots by Carol Kapchek uh, in the 1920s. And it was the first use of the word robot, um, which is uh, to, to mean forced labor. And um, so Tapestry Opera wanted to remount this production a hundred years later for the centennial and uh, to, to do it as an opera and sort of look at the ways in which um, Kapchek was exploring uh, modernization and mechanization 
uh, and how that was affecting the labor market 100 years ago is very similar to some of the ways that like the internet and AI and uh, automation is affecting people today. So a lot of the sentiments were seemed very current and uh, it robots, robots <laughs> in an opera. Yes. Right. Yeah, uh, obviously. Obviously, so uh, the the opera, like the play, the opera has uh, has a bunch of uh, robots on stage and some human characters, and the humans are working on uh, some software, um, and at one point the software upgrade to one of the characters sort of indicates that the that the robot goes from being kind of like a mechanized worker to being kind of uh, uh, being becoming self-aware and starting to make its own choices. Uh, so they asked us uh, if we could put some lights on a performer and uh, maybe have it go from green to red or something like that to indicate uh, uh, that the that the the performer had kind of changed states. Uh, so who's this? Uh, uh, that's Scott or Alex. or Alex. Okay. Oh, oh, the character's yeah. name is Alex. Uh, uh, so Alex, uh, Alex becomes self-aware and then starts wanting to to determine his own future. Um, and the the wearables worked worked pretty well. Um, so unfortunately, when you do when things are cool, they don't want them on one performer. They want them on all of the performers. Uh, How many? It was a lot. There were twenty-two people on stage. So with the musicians, uh, there, yeah, because there were there was the there were the the singers, and then there was the choir, and then there was a live orchestra, and so we ended up putting these things on the live orchestra as well. So the orchestra ended up glowing in the dark, and it was it was absolutely wonderful, and everything was live synchronized uh, over Wi-Fi. Uh, to a lighting and soundboard so that it it would illustrate. So Nick, like how how in what period of time did we make these things and <laughs> how does that relate to open hardware? Um, it's a couple of things. So I, I think what became interesting was like as the scale went up, it wasn't like obviously a production is a production. So like we weren't just doing all of it. We were having to teach costume designers how to integrate wearables um, projection designers, lighting designers, how to control custom hardware over Wi-Fi, build the tools for them. Same thing with the sound designer. So I think, you know, for us, there was a ton of leveraging a lot of open source software tools to be able to kind of make these ridiculous connections because um, one, this was also in the middle of COVID when we could only meet them occasionally. So we would come together for these little workshops and then we would send them home with these little goodie bags of hardware that they would have like homework with like their Wi-Fi router and their things and like with little tools that we'd written them to to work on it. So, you know, we built everything from January to April. Yeah. And I think, you know, for us, it was peak chip shortage in the world. So, you know, we're also kind of leveraging um, our friends at Adafruit because we could actually buy enough of them. We actually bought all of them in North America at the time um, to kind of come up with like these really fast solutions to very custom problems. So I think what was interesting was we were able to, you know, leverage and kind of rework a lot of off the shelf stuff to come up with like, how do you do multi-piece streaming Wi-Fi robot wearable? <laughs> that doesn't really, you know, there's not really a manual for that, but I, I think for us it was one, being able to leverage with the open source hardware and the software and as also as a kind of really interesting way to um, interface with, you know, other practitioners that I had no idea. Like I didn't really know what a lighting designer did, but it was interesting because we had to like make them tools that they knew how to use to control things they'd never seen before. Yeah. Yeah. It was kind of like, I, I was so rattled the whole time because like i've never worked with i don't know what happens on a stage i don't either adam adam has some insights because he was like a proper professional musician for quite a while yeah um but uh so anyway so he would translate for us which is my, really my favorite on stage right. my favorite backstage anecdote was the basic problem of you know the you know we have all of these wearables beautifully integrated into the costumes 
Yeah. But we needed to know whether or not they were actually attached to the Wi-Fi network. Um, so the stage manager developed a system to realize we had left on, like, for our own debugging, one red LED um, that shone out everyone's armpits. So everyone, before going on stage, had to, like, check their armpit <laughs> with the stage manager to make sure it was red. And it's like there was, like, this very serious moment of, like, everybody, do you have red armpits? And, like, if you had to say yes to go on stage, if not, you had to stay back. But. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Um, what are those objects next to you? So, again, because of the time frame, we were, you know, leveraging a lot of just like reassembling Adafruit uh, ESP 32s and some a few NeoPixels, and then everything else from there. We got into this world of again having to just three D print cases for them in house here at OCAD. So we, you know, again. Luckily, it wasn't so busy. We had kind of all of the 3D printers running, sort of like the resin ones running for our diffusers, and then just the sort of standard ones for our battery holders. Um, yeah. And yeah, we yeah. had to make them all here. We made them all in this room. Yes, very fast. Yeah. <laughs> so what Hi. you're telling me is I already benefit from open source yeah. hardware, and I should become a member. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that sounds great. That's like very, if you've already been QR. benefiting, so like, actually, you, <laughs> you might as well. <laughs> <laughs> actually, so uh, you seem to have an issue where your screen is a little, a little crunchy today. No. So if you could let me know what group that is, I can drop a link in the chat. I think that's us. Is that yeah, us? It is you guys? <laughs> <laughs> okay. We were the joke the whole time. I'm the joke yeah. the whole time. Yeah. Um, um, I do yeah. also uh, want to thank you all for coming on here and telling us more about your work and what you guys have been getting engaged with. Social Body Lab does so many cool things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We loved having you all at the summit this year. The projects that you all brought were incredible. There were some really fun explorations that these students were doing. Really excited to see where some of these ideas go. Um, it's just great to see people making cool stuff. <laughs> yeah. And, and to... To maybe convince Adam <laughs> to yeah, become yeah. a member, um, by being a member of Oshawa, you support all kinds of people who wouldn't otherwise be able to go to things like the summit. We have a fellowship, and it's funded by our members. Um, we're, we do a certification program, which is completely free. We just do it because we love open hardware. And that lets people have like assurance that when they make open hardware, they're iterating on hardware that is actually open source and you're not mm -hmm. accidentally infringing on someone's rights and it it benefits everyone in the community and um yeah it helps things uh like this happen and also um you will get stickers stickers if you sign up so yeah you, you strike me as a sticker yeah. lover <laughs> <laughs> a real sticker vibe <laughs> so hopefully that is enough to convince you to become a member yeah <laughs> Um, and yeah, Kate needs a shameless plug. Um, <laughs> so if you're ever looking to learn how to use wearable electronics, there used to be this book, but soon there's going to be this book, which is the second edition of make wearable electronics, which features lots of cool projects by makers like you and many people in the open hardware community. So, um, right now it's just on gross black and white paper, but in January it will be in color and maybe on bookshelves near you. So, is there like a pre-order anyway. link yeah. or something we could share? Uh, yeah, I will. I will. I'll, I'll pass it on. Amazing. Um, we will get yeah. it out to the people. But yeah, thank you guys for all that you do. Open Hardware is amazing, and uh, we're just so lucky to have community organizers like you. Amazing. Okay. Thank you guys so much. We'll talk soon. Bye.